Washington will look to end their three-game losing streak this Sunday against the Titans. We dive into the top matchups to look out for in Week 5. Plus, Commander linebacker Jamin Davis is off to a strong start in his second season. He tells our captain, London Fletcher, what has changed for him in year two. And the Commanders will have to slow down Titans running back Derrick Henry. But what are the other keys leading to a Washington victory? Command Center starts now. Welcome on in. Julie Donaldson here with you. I have Logan Paulson and Santana Moss. And look, we are wearing the Command the Cure shirts for a very good reason, as Sunday is going to be the crucial catch game that every team around the league in the NFL does, trying to prevent and raise awareness for all cancers, of course. Tanya Snyder and Dan Snyder started so many years ago the Think Pink campaign for breast cancer awareness. So we are commanding the cure today. Yeah, it's a fantastic cause. I mean, helping so many people around the country, and it's really cool to be a part of it. And the team kind of be, having the commanders be the genesis of that is really cool, too. Yeah, I think it's a great cause. I think it's a great thing to get behind. There's so many women out there, so many individuals uh, as a whole that, that has to deal with this. And um, it's great for us to show support and show them that we're behind them. Unfortunately, too many people are impacted by cancer, but we are doing our part to raise awareness and hopefully you will as well. If you buy a ticket, you get a free shirt as well. So we'll see you on Sunday with your shirt. Uh, <laughs> Sunday is the game. Here we go. Taking on the Tennessee Titans. Now they are two and two on the season. Washington has won two of the last three meetings overall against them. A lot of attention, of course, if the Titans are coming to town is going to be on their rushing attack. And that would be one Derrick Henry. He's coming off a season high 114 rushing yards in last week's win over the Colts, while Washington has held their last two opponents to under 75 rushing yards. So let's take a look at how these two teams are going to stack up this season, both averaging a shade over 18 points a game. Washington has the edge in total yards, and despite allowing more total yards against, the Titans are holding opponents to a point less per game than Washington. But of course, we know it all starts with stopping the run. In the NFL, is um like every week is like a different monster with the backs. I know last week we had Pollard and uh, Zeke, and they like they own beasts. And D. Hen, like, like he's really their offense. So we already know it's going to be a big focus on getting him the ball, and we're going to have to stop him. So. Still look over there. The guy is really big, really fast, and talented. You know, understands how to run, uh, how to set up blocks. So. Um, don't want to make it out to be more than it is. You know, there are a lot of talented running backs in the league, but he's certainly, you know, right up there with, with the best in our, in, in our game. And so it's going to be a big challenge. I think we're all on the same page, um, honestly. Um, but at the same time, I think that c communication continually has to be talked about. I, I think it continue has to be um, set by the coaches and then by the leaders, myself included, um, to make sure that permeates throughout the rest of the team and and to understand that while our record is one and three right now, the season is not over. And if you want things to change, then you have to, you know, change your behavior. Otherwise, you keep doing the same things over and over again. It's kind of like insanity. So I think. We all have to take that accountability individually as a group, offensively, defensively, coaches, all that together and see how we uh, put that together and, and hopefully have a better outcome. Let's now go inside the matchup presented by FanDuel. This fantasy football season, get more ways to win with FanDuel. So if we look at the specific matchups you're most looking forward to in this game, I think it kind of starts there with we talk about Derrick Henry. He really is kind of like their leader on offense. He finally got over 100 yards for this season. Uh, and as defensive coordinator Jack Dorris says, he's a big, strong, hard guy to have to stop. So right. Santana, how do you see him matching up against Washington's front seven? Well, it's no secret. I think it's going to be a tall task. Sure. And, and, and it's no secret also that his offense goes as far the king goes he's king henry for a reason this guy has been doing it year after year after year uh, i think our defense has risen to the challenge the last few weeks when it came to the run game so i see these guys going out there and doing just that rising to the challenge i feel that in order for us to go out there and do what we want to do collectively on both ends our defense has to slow this guy down if not 
then we're not going to get a chance to do something on the offensive side that we desperately and and, and in dire need to do. And, and it's something a little bit different than they've seen the last couple of weeks. A lot of outside zone, a little bit different philosophy from Tennessee here. They've got they've kind of built that offensive line to get that done. So can the defense handle that? Can they all play their gap responsibilities? It'll be a really fun matchup to watch this week. Yeah, so far, Washington's run defense has been pretty well, but yeah. it is going to be a different kind sure. of yeah. defending the right. run in this game than we have in the past few games. Uh, Logan, offensive coordinator Scott Turner, a lot of attention has been on him this sure. week and kind of how he can call a game mm -hmm. to help out the offensive line that's struggling, the quarterback that has, uh, you know, trying to get to his rhythm still. Yeah. How do you see him going up against their defensive coordinator, Shane Bowen? Yeah, so I think this is a really good matchup for Scott, not because of, you know, Bowen's got a bad defense or they're not doing things well in Tennessee. It's just the familiarity there. It's very, very, very similar to what Jack does. Mm -hmm. Lots of cover three, a lot of bend but don't break philosophy, a little cover two sprinkled in, and they're easy to identify coverages. The safeties kind of tip those off. So if Scott has a plan and can get Carson on the same page, I think they've seen how their concepts work against these coverages. So it should be a really, really nice matchup for this group because of the familiarity and getting guys comfortable. Santana, if we go like a level below that, part of the, the way that this team can have success, and Scott Turner can as well, is the play of the offensive line. Sure. And here we go into a game, again, with the offensive <laughs> line shuffling and dealing with injuries. Right. Once again, I, I kind of feel like this is, it's you know, a broken, broken record, record yeah, unfortunately. Absolutely. But it yeah. is what it is. You play with who you have. Yeah. Um, and their defensive front. They've got some guys, especially on the interior, that can get at it, Santana. How do you see those lines matching up? It's a never-ending story when it comes to our offensive line and who we're going to be facing. I'm not sure that we have to even worry about the individual names. We went into the game last week talking about, you know, Parsons, talking about the guys who can go out there and be difference makers. But I think if we can't protect these guys without the teams forcing us or, or bringing more than four people, then that's a problem. So we have to be creative, I think, offensively for us to make sure that we're putting the right lineups out there, that we can make sure that Carson can excel with and we can be productive as an offense regardless of what we do and what we try to do let's make sure we protect him first and foremost yeah and i think great point tana i think one of the things about this group is that they're kind of a whole bunch of no names outside of jeffrey simmons who mm -hmm. might be the best interior player in the nfl at the moment he's grading better than aaron donald by pff <laughs> metrics he is a very productive player interesting to see how a young player like sadiq's going to match up with him he's been drawing a lot of double teams yes. as well yeah. because of that that's what happens but he still wins despite sure. that and it says because he gets the double team that means it frees up somebody else Right. to mm -hmm. be free and when you get it you just got to go beat your man he's definitely Good a job. tough one to go up against um, but look you play the guys that are out there you make no excuses and we'll see how this team comes together and hopefully it's in favor for Washington uh, well one player Washington definitely hopes will be a key factor on Sunday is our linebacker Jamin Davis just in his second season showing growth in his sophomore year here Davis leads the team in sacks actually with three through the first four games and well we know how the defense will have their hands full this week trying to contain Derrick Henry and the Titans offense. Well, here he is with our captain, London Fletcher, getting ready for the Titans. Jamin, appreciate you joining me. You're off to a strong start in your second season, three sacks and, and four games already. How comfortable are you feeling right now this season? I mean, completely different outcome from how it started out for me last year. It's just more so, like I said before, just going out there and trying to play a lot faster and just really be myself. Uh, I mean, this offseason, one of the biggest things for me was just trying to eliminate a lot of the extra thinking. So, I mean, now, like I said, just going out there and trying to be myself. When you say eliminate the extra thinking, what what do you feel has been your biggest improvement on the on the field this season? I mean, one of them things where it's like you've seen this play before, so you can kind of anticipate it a lot more and just trying to go out there and play faster to it than you did before last year. It's, it's great that you mentioned seeing this play before. One thing I noticed in the ball game against Dallas the other day, they got you in a situation where they – had a stack release with um, C.D. Lamb, and mm -hmm. you had him in coverage, mm -hmm. and he, um, you know, beat you across your face. Right. They tried that same play later on in the game, mm -hmm. and it was you made a great adjustment. Right. You knew yeah. it was coming, yeah. and you recovered it. Mm -hmm. DeBron knocked the ball down, mm -hmm. but you were going to knock the play, the play down, the pass down also. Is right. that part of just that growth and, right. and right. understanding you see a play? Yeah, that's basically the same exact thing. Is like knowing plays that you've seen before and knowing how you exactly how you're supposed to play it and just trying to be better the next time going around. And going forward, that's the same thing the rest of the year, just trying to play 
faster and make a lot more plays like that so I can just do what I can to be a playmaker. You got a, a lot of former linebackers that you deal with in your room. You got, you know, obviously Steve Rush, your linebacker coach, he played. Jack Del Rio played. Mm -hmm. Ron Rivera played. Right, right. <laughs> you right, get a lot exactly. of information. Right. What has been the biggest message or the message that they mainly have given you this season? Uh, play fast. I mean, that's that's all it really boils down to. Don't do not do all the extra thinking like I said before because all that's going to do is have you, like, just tensed yeah. up and out there thinking a little too much. So it's, that's one of the biggest things that they harp on constantly is just going out there and really being yourself. That's what I was trying to focus on this offseason, like I said. So, I mean, going forward, I just want to continue to do what I'm doing and just trying to be myself, not worry about what anybody trying to say about me because they don't know me. So, right. at the end of the day, I'm just going to go out there and try to continue to be a playmaker so we can turn this thing around. Yeah, you you made a, t a ton of plays. And, and you know, I, I look back and think about the game against the Philadelphia Eagles and, you know, it wasn't the type of result we wanted. But right. just the, the flash plays where there was times where Jalen Hurts is, mm -hmm. you know, running out of pocket, think he's going to get a first down, and right, you just come right. out of nowhere like a blur. <laughs> right, right. That's just part of right. not thinking and just right, playing fast. Right, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's more so of like, okay, you know where you're supposed to be, so don't think about it. Just do it. Just go make the play. So ain't nobody else going to do it. So, hell, I mean, <laughs> all 11 to the ball, that's always the goal. But at the same time, if you got opportunity to make a play, you might as well take it. Got a big challenge this weekend going against Derrick Henry and a tight rushing attack. What, what type of challenges do they present, especially going against a big back like Derrick Henry? I mean, first and foremost, your main focus is to stop the run because you know they're a big running team. So coming into this, you want to be able to read your keys, do as much you can to get a jump on them with film and whatnot, and making sure that you know exactly where they run, where they run, run, run the ball and uh, that stop that first and foremost, like I said, and then first and second down, getting all the way off the field on third down as well. So like I said, just run game, that's that's really the biggest thing to harp on first and foremost. So. The last two ball games, you guys have been outstanding playing against the run, mm -hmm. against two of the better running teams in the, in the National Football League. What has been the biggest difference between, you know, early in the season and now have you played the, the run against Philadelphia and, and the Dallas Cowboys? I mean, it's it, yeah, we've been trying to do what we needed to do, but at the same time, we know we're still not where we want to be as a team um, uh, defensively, and we just want to live up to our standards just play fast as a defense. So. Uh, I mean, it's really just trying to play fast, like I said before, get all 11 hats to the ball, knowing that we just want to get off the field on third down. And how you do that is stopping them on first and second down. So that's really the main focus, and we're just going to continue to do that throughout the season. All right, man. Appreciate you joining me. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go get them. We need you out there, Jamin. Now make sure you watch Command Center Game Day Live, the official pregame show of the Washington Commanders. We are live on the air starting at 11 a.m. and taking you up to the start of our game against the Titans. You can watch on our YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter. After the game, do not miss Command Center Post Game Live for reaction analysis and interviews with head coach Ron Rivera and the players. You can also find that on YouTube. And of course, you can always listen on Big 100 on iHeartRadio. Take command of your game days. Coming up, Running back Antonio Gibson is off to a strong start to the season, already with two trips to the end zone. He joins a former number 24 for a franchise for the franchise in our latest edition of Commander Code. And a little bit later in the show, we discuss the keys to Washington ending their three-game losing streak and picking up a win in week five. More command center after this point. Maybe one day cooking in the kitchen with JD McKissick. Damn, I'm different. Son. You ain't got no time for no joke. What I heard is true. I'm definitely a hooper if you heard that. <laughs> I was running up a hill and everything. Run up a hill. <laughs> run <a> 2 <laughs> Man. There was a time where I almost blitzed when I wasn't supposed to, <laughs> supposed to blitz. I was like, man. I'll make sure to catch J.D. McKissick on this week's episode of the Players Club at 7.30 on NBC4. Of course, we know you're already going to be tuned in because we have Command Center Coach Commands with Ron Rivera starting at 7 p.m. on NBC. It's our power hour. And on this week's episode, D.C. United manager Wayne Rooney and several members of the team stopped by the commander's practice this week. He joined Coach Rivera and myself for an exclusive interview comparing the different coaching styles between the two sports. It all starts 7 p.m. NBC4, and if you miss it, you can catch it on our team website and our YouTube channel. Last Sunday, running back Antonio Gibson for the Commanders became the fourth player in franchise history to eclipse the 2,000-yard mark within his first three seasons with the franchise. Of course, he's going to want to keep those yards coming on the ground this Sunday against the Titans. But before we did get to the game and to practice, we paired him up with another player that wore the number 24 for the franchise, cornerback Sean Springs. We had them play a new board game in this episode of Commander Code. <laughs> Cool. I 
pick hard first, so you go first. All right, I go first. Uh, off, is he an offensive player? Yes. Is it an offensive player? Yes. All right. Is he white? No. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to it. Is, yeah. he, is he a running back? Yes. All right. Oh, oh, that's that was a good guess, bro. All right, this next move is this next move <laughs> is big for me. This next move I gotta hear. Does he have a beard? No. Ooh, I'm I'm close to guessing. Is it me? Come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. He got it. <laughs> hey, come on, man. He got it. Totally set him up for that. I'm surprised he didn't get it earlier. Uh, hey, when we come back here, we're going to go behind enemy lines with Titan Insider Jim Wyatt and senior writer Zach Selby to see what Tennessee is focused on ahead of this weekend's matchup. Game day details are delivered by Paisano's, where you get buy one, get one large pizzas on Commander's Game Day and free toppings for extra points on Monday. Order online at PaisanosPizza.com. Well, the Commanders will take on the Titans at FedEx Field on Sunday with kickoff scheduled for 1 p.m. You can watch the game on CBS, or if radio is your style, make sure you catch Bram Weinstein, London Fletcher, and myself on Big 100 or streaming on the iHeartRadio app. For more on this week's matchup, let's go behind enemy lines with our senior writer, Zach Selby. Thanks, Julie. And with me, I have the great Jim White of TennesseeTitans.com, senior staff writer and editor. Um, Jim, let's let's talk about really the question that has really got a lot of people's attention since you know the draft. Uh, AJ Brown no longer there, obviously playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, what has a post AJ Brown offense looked like for the Titans? Well, inconsistent. I mean, I think that's the most, uh, you know, the, wor the word that probably fits this team the best because in the first half of some games, uh, this team has looked good. And that includes this past week's game against the Colts and the prior week's game against the Raiders. Second half of games has been a struggle. I mean, they have not scored a touchdown uh, in the second half of the last three games. I uh, have not scored a point, I should say. So, uh, very concerning there. You know, offensively, they've tried. They're trying to break in a bunch of young, new players, and uh, you know, we have seen um, you know some success there, but still, some guys trying to find their way. And I look at Ryan Tannehill and what he's dealing with. He was used to throwing to a guy like AJ Brown in the past, and now he's throwing to you know just throwing to Traylon Burks and throwing to you know who's a rookie, Kyle Phillips, who's a rookie. Uh, Austin Hooper's a first-year player here. Robert Woods, a first-year player here. Chiga Quanquo, a tight end, is a is a rookie, and then they've got two new starters on the offensive line. So they're a work in progress for sure. Miss AJ Brown's big play ability, um, but they've shown signs to let you believe it can still manage, but just got to be better. You know, there's going to be a lot of different matchups. You know, between Washington and and the Titans, both a big match for both teams, but. Um, if there's one, you know, matchup between a position group or individual player that you're going to have your eye on on Sunday, who do you or what do you think that would be? What I'm looking to see is whether the Titans can generate enough pressure on Carson Wentz to force him into mistakes or whether he's going to have time to find some of his guys and, uh, and, and the commanders are able to build some momentum on offense. I think that's one of the big keys of the game. Obviously, the Titans got to get their second half woes figured out on offense. But defensively, I think the Titans need to set a tone in this game by being disruptive, forcing Carson Wentz and mistakes. And I think a lot of that starts up front. It is time now for our keys to winning presented by the Maryland Lottery. Play fast, win fast with fast play games from the Maryland Lottery. So Washington has won their last two of three contests against the Tennessee Titans. Don't play them all that often. Tennessee, though, coming in on a two-game winning streak. Washington trying to snap their losing streak. Uh, Logan, why don't you give us your keys to winning? 
Well, Santana, I got an easy one. Julie, I got an easy one. Stop the run. I think everybody <laughs> knows this. You know, my mom doesn't watch football. She knows you got to stop the run against the Tennessee Titans. Derrick Henry's a bad man, but yeah. that offensive line has done a great job in terms of running the outside zone. Everything they do comes off the run. Play pass. It helps their offensive line. Taylor Lewan, their starting left tackle, is out. Yeah. Helps shore up the pass protection. This is a huge deal for the Washington defense, stopping the run, because it really kind of puts handcuffs on this offense for Tennessee. And, Logan, like I told you before, I'm with you with that. Yeah, stopping the run would be key. In the last few weeks, I think our defense done a pretty good job of trying to do that. But you can stop the run. You can be more productive on both sides. But if you have these right here, self-inflicting penalties, you're going to always shoot yourself in the foot. It don't matter what you do yeah. successfully. So right. I think we have to make sure that we put this to a minimum or cut it. You know what I mean? Cut yeah. it now. Because I think last week, if you look at it, we was in enemy territory mm -hmm. and we played a pretty good game, but we kept shooting ourselves in the foot and that's got us behind the eight ball. Yeah, I think also when you have a conservative game plan, which you can have against Tennessee because they run the ball so much, mm -hmm. those penalties become even more significant. Yeah. So big deal. Get Carson Wentz comfortable. I think that's a big deal this yeah. week, right? This defense, as we've talked about, is something that Carson Wentz should be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Scott should be familiar with it. Can they protect him? Can they limit Jeffrey Simmons' effectiveness? Can they find easy throws for him and easy reads? That's the biggest thing because his discomfort and his kind of unsettledness has been one of the major issues in the offensive struggles, in my opinion. And that's key because I believe that mine kind of, you know, correlates with yours. Yeah, absolutely. Keep, keeping him comfortable will allow our offense to rise to the challenge. I think offensively, we have too much talent on this offensive side of the, uh, football, but we're just coming up short week in and week out whether it's up front not protect him whether Carson's not you know finding the right guy or you know going through the right reads or just not being productive as a whole we have to be better on offense for us to move this train yeah because when you look at this team over the last two weeks like you've said a million times the defense actually has been playing really well yeah. it's the offense that hasn't been supporting them Julie what do you think this offense can do this week against Tennessee yeah 17 sacks for Carson Wentz uh, I, to me a lot of it's going to be the mindset coming into the game I, I think that mm -hmm. so many guys coming in on a three game losing streak they've got to get their mind right start fast because Tennessee over the last four games has had a touchdown on their opening drive I don't think you want to be playing from behind uh, in this game at all when you're trying to get right against a team and uh, with an offense that's been a little shaky. Thanks for joining us at Command Center, everybody. We will see you at the game.